Well, good morning. Uh, it, uh, today, in this episode, we are going to be uh, working on a Raymarine ST4000 autopilot, uh, in particular, the drive unit. Um, there's a couple of issues, I think, with that drive unit. At least I've had a couple of issues. And today we're going to um, look at a couple of electrical connections in the drive unit that are prone to failure. And in, we're also going to disassemble the, the drive unit or the gearbox, which if you've never taken one apart, it's, uh, it's a little scary when you open it up and 20 little, uh, little gears fall out. Uh, but we figured it out and uh, we'll take you along to see you know, what is inside the Raymarine uh, wheel pilot gearbox and drive unit. So here's my Raymarine uh, autopilot wheel pilot. Um, it's a pretty really quite a, a neat uh, design really and it does a lot of work you know with a little bit of plastic and a little bit of metal and a couple of gears and a very small motor so it's really quite an engineering uh, uh, design I think. Um, <clears throat> I've removed the wheel pilot um, from my steering wheel, obviously. I've also separated the uh, the wheel <clears throat> um, so I could access the internal part of the the wheel. That just snaps together, really, with uh, uh, a screwdriver and just carefully wedge it around, and it'll pop that cover off. So here's the inside of the the wheel pilot, the drive belt, uh, these rollers that keep the outer uh, outer part of the wheel, you know, rolling around. But what we're really going to focus on today is the drive unit, and that's this apparatus that's mounted to the wheel to the wheel uh, drive. Um, so let me uh, let me show you a few things that um, have gone wrong with my wheel pilot. So on my uh, auto helm wheel pilot, the first thing um, that I noticed that was wrong with it is this uh, little fitting right here. So normally your power cord, power supply into the wheel pilot from the control unit would come in right here. There is a nut on the end of this little fitting that right now it's not real tight, but it it makes everything here tight and rigid. On my boat, this nut was missing. <clears throat> and so um, when I take this off, you'll see that the, you know, the connection there, which is an electrical connection, really um, was pretty weak. In other words, it could move around, and I believe that's what ultimately caused the failure um, on my uh, wheel pilot. So if you don't have this nut and it's not on there tight and making all this rigid, you will have a, you will have a failure at some point. Now I'm going to disassemble or unscrew the motor drive, which is the top part of this, from the gearbox, which is down here at the bottom. So this just unscrews. It's quite simple to take it apart. Um, you just unscrew this. Now one word of caution I, I will give you is that there is, there, and I'll show you the electrical connection in here, but turning this I think broke my wires. Um, so let me lift this off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've, I've removed the motor assembly, which is this unit here. It's quite heavy, uh, metal, you know, metal motor in there from the gearbox. So this portion here is the gearbox. I would not necessarily recommend that you open this, but I will show you how to do that. Uh, for right now, we're gonna focus just on the motor assembly. So once you have unscrewed the two halves, the motor itself will slide right out. <clears throat> it has a uh, some kind of a shielding, metal shielding around it which slides off also. Should. 
okay leaving just the motor now you notice there's this this black end cap that also pops off and it exposes a couple of wires in there now normally those wires are attached to that but on mine the wires are broken and that was the original problem that I had uh, when my autopilot first stopped working. It was broken, I believe, because there was some play in this little end piece because it didn't have a nut on it. It would move, and eventually the very pretty fine wires inside this motor assembly uh, broke. So let me take that apart and show you. Okay, so I've taken the, the metal cap off just to get that out of the way, but let me show you uh, what I'm talking about in terms of electrical connections, right? So the motor has a red and a black, fairly small wires that come out of the, uh, the, the motor. And those small wires gen originally were crimped into these sockets. Um, on this end piece. I believe they call this the wire loom perhaps. When I ordered parts for it that's what it was called. So normally they're they're wired together and it's a you know it's a pretty flimsy connection quite frankly. Um, I've already repaired this once um, and what I did was I ordered a new loom which had small red and black wires attached to it crimped on there <coughs> Um, rather than um, cut these original wires off, I left them in place and I soldered the new loom onto those wires to give me a little bit more a little bit more wire to work with. That was a very short, tight um, connection and almost impossible for me to, to solder you know onto this motor drive. So instead, I, I soldered them here and put some, some uh, heat shrink around them to keep them protected. Unfortunately, in disassembling the motor recently, the, the wires pulled out of these crimp connections again. Um, so what I'm going to do is solder those in place if I can. That's really the heart of the motor drive itself. There's not much to it. If you have intermittent um, issues, then it very possibly could be that this wire, one of these wires, is uh, broken. That's what was, that was uh, how mine manifests itself. Um, if I help, if I jiggled the wire here, that connects in here a little bit, sometimes it would, the the drive would fire up. Other times it wouldn't fire up at all. And when I opened it up and took it apart, that's what I found. One of these wires was broken um, right at the crimp. And um, if you held your mouth right, sometimes it would work. Most of the time, it did not. Um, so once I, once I repaired this, and by the way, you can buy this little plastic cap with the two wires attached, along with this nut, and I believe there was something else in the kit I, I can't remember now uh, some probably some o-rings and things um, from defender for about I don't know 40 bucks I think way overpriced but I really needed this nut and I could not find one anywhere else um, and I figured while I was at it I'd get a new loom unfortunately that didn't last all that long so that is you know my issue today that I'm going to um, repair and then we'll then we'll dive into the gearbox which is another rabbit hole well after a little bit of uh, a little bit of work and trying to get that set up I, uh, I believe anyway that I've gotten those leads soldered onto those posts um, it's not the easiest for a couple reasons. Um, first of all, you cannot get the uh, the post too hot. They go through a plastic, you know, a plastic cap there, and if you get it overly hot, they'll unseat or melt the plastic. 
Secondly, those posts are crimped. The wires were crimped inside, and um, so you can't get the wires in there very far. Um, and so time will tell, I guess, if that if that joint holds up. <clears throat> Looks pretty ugly, but um, hopefully there's enough solder in there that it'll hold. We'll have a little bit more once I start to reassemble it. Well, I have to make a, a confession here, an error on my part. So that, that solder actually held pretty pretty well. I tried pulling it on a little bit, and it's pretty well secured. Unfortunately, what I forgot was this black or this black metal cap goes here. <laughs> so the end of the, the wires pass through this hole in the end and then get soldered in. And then this cap kind of protects all the wiring, but this cap f pushes flush up against this edge. So now I'm going to have to undo that solder, slide the black plastic or the black metal cap, put the wires through, and then solder them from the outside here. Major pain in the rump. But I don't know any other way to do it. Well, after a considerable amount of fooling around because of my my error in reassembly, I finally got the um, I finally got the the wire loom that end cap piece resoldered onto the onto the motor assembly with the cap in place. <clears throat> um, so, if you ever have to take that apart, make sure that you have the wires fed from the end cap through this this cap and have the cap off so you can get to the soldering on the inside um, but pain in the pain in the rump but I think I, I have it so now I'm going to start to reassemble um, that part of the drive unit <clears throat> so in order to uh, reassemble now that we've got our wire loom uh, re-soldered. It's pretty simple. The uh, the sleeve goes over the motor itself. <clears throat> you take your uh, drive motor cap and you slide it in through there and the end piece will come out this end like that. If you have your cap, you can you can put your cap on there. Also serves as a gasket, I guess. And then lastly is this little nut. Um, goes on kind of strange. It goes with the flatter part of the flange to the outside. Now, just one word of caution here. There's not a lot holding that little plastic cap from turning. And if it turns, it will inevitably break your wires. Um, so you want to be very careful with that. You can see mine turned, so I don't I don't want to force that on because I'll break those wires. Um, so I'm going to look at how to how can I turn that? How can I hold the middle while I'm turning the outside? I think that's going to be the secret. <clears throat> It's a little hard to do with just two hands here. I think I could hold it. Not, not squeezing the pins, just I'm spreading the... I'm trying to spread these uh, needle nose pliers in, the, in there to put some friction on it and hold it while I turn the nut on. Not quite tight enough, but we're getting closer. And ideally, you want this all nice and snug so that nothing can move. I think that was part of my part of my problem before was without this nut in place, lots of things could move here. As that motor would would turn on and off, 
you know it would things would would shake vibrate and move and ultimately that's what broke my electrical connection I, I believe there is a, a flat spot on this nut so you can put a wrench on it if you need to I think that's pretty pretty tight there so that is the motor assembly you know re reassembled and ready to connect um, to the autopilot next up we're going to take a look at the gearbox All right, so next up we're going to take a look at the gearbox on this Ray Marine Autopilot. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, I've already disassembled this, taken the, the second uh, outer ring off. This was the part that's mounted to the steering wheel, right, with these, um, you know, with these clips that are held on with hex head bolts. <clears throat> Make sure you get the right size for that. <clears throat> um, it's easy to separate these two just with a screwdriver, pop it apart. <clears throat> this is the inside then of the wheel pilot. So this is your belt drive, runs inside here, makes contact with this, and that's what steers your boat. Um, there's these little uh, round rollers. Um, you know, these can be cleaned, um, I suppose lubricated a little bit if you're, if they make a lot of noise. But for today, what we're going to do is we're going to open up this assembly here. Um, so make sure when you're working on this that you get a screwdriver that fits these screw heads um, really tight. You really don't want to strip these out. <clears throat> um, but all you have to do is take out the there's like five Phillips screws and you can get yourself in a whole lot of trouble uh, by accessing the gearbox and I'll show you what I mean by that <clears throat> so with the five screws out then this top plate comes off, just lifts straight up. Not much, not much there behind that. <clears throat> um, you can at that point replace uh, or remove the drive belt if you ever needed to replace it. That's how you get in there to, to replace it. It goes around this cogged wheel here. Uh, if you haven't seen the inside of one of these, um, this is the clutch that activates uh, or engages the autopilot once you've turned it on, right? So that locks uh, locks it on so that now when this motor turns it, it moves the wheel. And the way it does that is through this um, kind of concentric circled gear thing here and it pulls tight, it rubs tight on the belt, tightening the belt around uh, the outer plate. So that's how that works. If you ever break anything in here, you can disassemble that. What I'm going to be working on though is these four screws uh, that hold the gearbox in place. So I was taking this apart really just to clean it, make sure I, you know, everything inside was nice and clean, and I had never taken this part out before. Um, I didn't really know what to expect, quite frankly, um, but I was undaunted and decided I would go ahead and take this all apart so I could make sure it was all nice and clean and my auto autopilot was working fine at the end of the season but it did make a lot of noise I mean it sounded pretty noisy um, and what that noise was I still don't really know but I thought hey why not do a thorough job of cleaning this thing out and, and figuring out you know what's what's what <clears throat> And that's what led me to take this apart. I 
These are pretty long s screws for how skinny they are, small diameter, but they go pretty deep into that gearbox housing to hold it in place. Now I'm going to warn you, <clears throat> when you take this apart, you want to have a place where you can catch anything that might fall out of the gearbox. <clears throat> this is the gearbox. And so I'm going to very carefully just kind of wiggle it around. And mine was a little bit harder to get off than that. Uh, it was kind of stuck on there. But if you can see that, you can see there's a bunch of little gears attached here. And so that's one of the things that we want to be very careful about. We're going to take these gears off, put them on something white so we can find them. <clears throat> So now this is the inside of the gearbox. I don't know how well you can see in there, but there are a whole bunch of little <laughs> planetary gears in there. So I'm going to take it all the way apart. Um, I'll, I'll be honest and tell you, when I did this the first time, I freaked out quite a bit. Um, I freaked out because, holy cow, that's a lot of gears, and I'm not... I didn't really know exactly how they all went back together. Got one stuck in there. I'll have to get it out. <clears throat> As I um, As I started to take this apart the first time, all these gears came out. This row, this this level was double stacked. There's two of them for each each spot around the the central gear. The next layer, there's only one layer deep, but a whole bunch of gears in there. The next layer, also one layer deep. And as I was taking, as this thing was falling apart almost in my hands I realized I had no idea how that sucker w was supposed to go back together <clears throat> in fact what I was looking at was like how do I stack those up and hold them in place I mean that just seemed like incredibly difficult and to do that I wasn't even sure how many came off this level this row of of gears <clears throat> um and at that point, I'll be honest, I was quite, uh, quite overwhelmed with what I had accidentally done here trying to clean this thing out. Um, <clears throat> it didn't, it, it took me a little while <clears throat> just thinking about the gear arrangements um, to realize this, this wasn't nearly as daunting as I thought it was, right? And here's why. <clears throat> If we start with the very um, the very outside, this part did not come off of the gearbox. It's it's um, I'm sure it's got some kind of pin in there to hold it in place. So that part didn't come off. But as you can see, there are six metal studs there, and as luck would have it. <clears throat> All you really have to do to put this thing together is double stack. All, all the gears are the same size, thankfully. You just double stack these gears all around here. So that's not nearly as daunting of a task as I thought it was going to be. Now I'm going to point out one thing. So um, I'm not sure exactly what type of lubricant to put in here. Um, when I took it all apart, I'd kind of wiped off all the gears and then just to have something in that gearbox I put some heavy duty worm drive worm drive saw lubricant in there probably too heavy in fact it's kind of sticky 
Um, and so although these things turn okay, I think that's way too heavy of a oil uh, or lubricant to use on these very, very small, you know, very, very small gears. So um, I am going to clean these and I'm going to use a very light machine oil, like three in one oil or something on those. Uh, but just for demonstration purposes today, this is, this is how I'll show it to you. Um, so once you put the, you know, six gears double stacked on there, <clears throat> Then it's just a matter of taking each of these layers, right, and putting the various gears on each of these pins and stacking them together. So this one gets three gears. Again, they're kind of sticky. And then I'm going to take I'm going to take the next gear, and I'm going to seat that together. This one gets three gears, and it's together. And then on the other side, we need four gears. Oh, I forgot we're missing one. Remember there's one in stuck in there. I've got to get that one out to finish the finish the job. Let me grab a small screwdriver. <clears throat> Coax that last gear out of there. <clears throat> okay. Now we know one thing, we know that this double stack row has to be up against here, right? So that means this has to come here. And that's all there is to assembling the stack, <clears throat> okay? Lastly, We feed or slide all of this stack carefully inside the assembly housing. You don't want to force it. There's splines inside the gearbox, but that puts them all back in. And then the last piece is to very carefully put this gearbox on top of these stacked ones. I think the way I did that was to kind of put everything sideways and gently giving it a little movement now and then to make sure things line up. slide it into place. Now, my, my stack didn't work very well. So I'm going to have to restack these, unfortunately. Not sure if they were just a little bit out of alignment or what, but I'll come back and try it again. Um, so if I, if I got stuck here, then it'd be just a matter of sliding out the double stack six rows out of the end, end of the gearbox. I don't need to re disassemble the entire thing, remember. If I do start to slide this out, then I probably am going to have to restack the entire batch because everything starts to move around at that point, as you can see. So to be safe, I think I'll take everything out You can see how sticky that gearbox, that gear oil is. I really need to move to something lighter than that, I think. There. 
<clears throat> but that's how you take it all apart. <clears throat> I didn't do a great job putting it back together, but I will, uh, I will get all the gears cleaned up, um, some light machine oil in there, and then we'll reassemble it um, and show you how that goes. Okay, two things. Um, first of all, I want to point out that although these gears are all the same size, there there does to be appear to be a, a top and a bottom. Um, I'm trying to show you here, it's really hard to see, but there's a little bit of a crown on one side, and it almost feels like it's indented on the other side. I don't know exactly which way they go. Um, I'm putting them crown side up, away from the, the bottom of the post that it's riding on. Um, and when you're stacking the ones at the bottom, I think that's probably important that they, you know, are stacked properly, in the same direction at least. Um, the other thing, <clears throat> when, I, when I tried to put the, the stack together, um, you know, we had a little difficulty, but I, I think this might actually be even easier, which is to just stack them all right on the wheel and then take the, the housing, the drive, the gearbox housing, and slide that right over the top. Again, you might need to turn things a little bit. There, look how easy that slipped on there. Um, so that and then, you know, holding it tightly in place and then putting the screws in um, to rebuild the gearbox. So again, I'm still going to replace the oil in there. Uh, the grease stuff that I put in there was something much lighter. Um, but um, that's the general assembly of the gearbox. And then once we have that all put together, then the motor assembly goes back, screws back onto that. And that's a rebuilt uh, wheel pilot drive unit. Okay, so I've, uh, I've reworked the gearbox part of my uh, uh, auto helm wheel pilot. Um, so we've taken this apart, we've taken all the gears out, we've cleaned them. Um, I put just a few drops of uh, light machine oil in there, three in one, just to give it a little bit of lubrication. And now before I kind of wrap up the overhaul here of my wheel pilot, um, I'm taking these uh, roller wheels off, um, just going to give them a light uh, cleaning with a paper towel, get any sticky grease off of there, um, wipe out the plastic roller, um, put a little drop of 3-in-1 in there, and I think I'll be about wrapped up with this project. So it's been interesting. It'll be fun to see if the thing works now once I get her all put back together, uh, particularly the motor unit that I had to do some soldering on, but... Um, We'll uh, we'll have uh, kind of a last check on here on her here uh, when we get her put together. We'll take it back to the boat, hook it up, and uh, and see if it's if it works. So that's it to our our uh, auto helm project. So we've got her all put back together, ready to remount on the uh, you know on the steering wheel. But one thing that's uh, you know a good a good way to kind of check how things are is just to rotate the the wheel so it you can tell it's you know plastic on plastic but I don't hear any bearing type things or uh, anything that really works so that project is done well uh, we're back to the drawing board sort of with the uh, with the wheel pilot um, so we've taken it all apart put it all back together including the gearbox and um, uh, took it out to the boat today uh, put it back on the pedestal turn the power on um, activated the autopilot and it still is very very noisy 
um, mechanical noise, right? It, it, like the gears or something in the in in the wheel unit itself. Um, <clears throat> but so I brought it back home, and I'm going to do a little bit more investigation with it. Um, the first thing that I I wanted to test was whether or not it was the motor itself. <clears throat> so I've got the motor unit here sitting in my sitting in my vise. Um, and what I'm going to what I'm going to do is just put a little power to the inlet and outlet uh, or the electrical connection in there just to to make sure the motor itself is not making a uh, significant amount of you know noise that doesn't belong there let's let's say um, so the way I've, I've done this is I um, I grabbed the jump start battery pack out of my uh, out of my garage. I took a couple pieces of bare copper or uh, insulated copper wire. Um, I've got them connected to the battery, uh, the jump start battery, and I'm just going to turn the power on on the battery and try to touch the two terminals here. It's not the best. You got to watch out for a short, but. You will hear the motor run. So, you know, to me that does not sound like a defective bad motor. Now, granted, I don't have a load on it, um, but I don't. I really don't think it's the motor itself. I think it's something in the gears. When I, um, well, here, let's try another. Let's try another diagnostic. So for the second diagnostic, basically, I've reattached the, the motor unit to the gearbox. Um, I've got the clutch disengaged, so the, the uh, unit itself can spin. The clutch uh, is disengaged, so the belt will slide inside the wheel, right? Just, just as though you didn't have the autopilot engaged. Uh, but I think this will give us some some uh, visual or, or, or um, I should say audio clues as to what where the noise is coming from. Let me see if I can set this up. <clears throat> so I've got the same setup. Uh, my wires connected to a jumper battery. I just turned the battery on and if I'm careful I don't give myself a shock, but uh, I'll try to apply some power now to the drive motor. So that's quite loud. <clears throat> um, so I think what I'm going to do next. is I think I'm going to open up the box. I'm going to take the belt off. You know, maybe that noise is really from the belt and the rollers as opposed to the gearbox. And that's what I'm really trying to understand right now is where is that noise so that I can try to address it. Um, so let me see if I can get that set up. Okay, so I've taken the drive unit off the wheel and I have removed the cover right I took off <clears throat> sorry I took off the um, I took off the back the inside plate that holds the belt in place so I took that off right and I've now removed the belt itself so now the gears will turn and this will turn Right, so the question is, is the noise coming out of here? I don't think these make any noise, but um, let me let me put this in the vise. We'll put some power to it. We'll see what it sounds like now without the the drive belt engaged. All right, same setup as before. Got my jumper battery, a couple of wires, and I'm going to touch the terminals now and see what. We're doing.
<clears throat> so that sounds like a lot of noise coming from this unit here. Now what I don't know is, and I think my next diagnostic step will be to take the motor and the drive the gear box off so this isn't on anymore. I don't know how to get that off. <laughs> I'll have to look at that, right? That's loose. Maybe that's the culprit there. Um, but I think I'll take the gearbox off. And I'm trying to think if I can actually put power to that without it coming apart. There's a lot of little gears in there. Let me think about that. Well, I might have found something here, I'm not sure, but I, I ended up taking this drive gear apart and that felt very, kind of felt like there was some grinding going on in that bushing right there. So I haven't cleaned it up yet. But what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna, um, just try applying a little power to the gearbox assembly now that I'm not connected through you know, all the other parts. Um, so let me just let me just try that. I don't know if I can get power connected to that. It's a little too dicey on the angle and all. And I don't want to uh, I don't want to fly the gears out of the gearbox. <laughs> it's open on the other side here. Let me just try that real quick. Hmm. Well, that didn't sound good, really. That's a lot of noise coming from that gearbox, it seems like, doesn't it? <clears throat> One more try at it. So I don't know what that means. Um, I've had this gearbox all apart before. One of the things I haven't been able to figure out is what type of lubricant to put in there. I mean, it's a whole bunch of little plant planetary gears. And there's about three layers of them down in there. And I'm not quite sure what to make all that. Maybe I'll try putting power on there one more time. Mm, maybe not. Those, um, so those little plastic gears actually sit on the spindles on this piece when it's in there so I don't think I want to run it without that. I was hoping it was something up in here but that gearbox does sound a little noisy. Now I'm running a light machine oil in there. Maybe it should be something heavier like a gear oil. Which I had actually put some gear oil in there first and it just seemed so heavy I took it out but Maybe that's what it needs. Well, we'll have a little bit more later. Well, I think I figured out where the noise is coming from at least. So I have the gearbox in my hand and just put a put a um, put a hex key through the through the hole in it so I can turn it and now you can really
messed up the gears. Hold on. There. You can really hear that. That's the noise in here. So now we're going to have to dig into this gearbox and see if we can figure out what that is. If it's something that's wear related or if it can be lubricant related. But that's the noise. All right, well, investigation continues. Well, I'm no genius, but um, I think this sounds a whole lot better. I can get the... So, basically what I ended up having to do was um, a couple things. So I took the gearbox all apart. As it turns out, the little plastic gears have a crown on one side and a slight recess maybe at the on the other side. Um, I put the crowns up away from the metal gear that they were resting on, thinking that some of that noise was just slop and play. I, I don't know if that's true. Um, but I put the crown side up away from the metal that it was sitting on. Put it back together. It still sounded kind of loud. Um, and at that point I had essentially wiped all the oil out of the gearbox. So I was running it dry. That, that didn't seem quite right either. Um, so I took a little bit of heavy duty, um, um, worm drive saw oil not a lot put a little bit in into the gearbox uh, and now it sounds much much better so I, I think that's what I'm gonna do with it um, I don't I don't really think there's much else to do um, so let me show you one thing real quick in all the times I've had this thing apart, I never quite knew how to get this gear off. Well, it turns out you don't do anything except lift it off. Uh, remember when it's all assembled, there's a plate over that. So that's what holds it from popping off. But to pull it out, you just lift it straight out. Uh, this, is, this pin pushes out, right? You can push that pin out and that gives you access to the bearing or the, the bushing that that runs through so you can put a little grease in there which is what I did I've never had that apart and didn't know it didn't know exactly how it came apart but it turns out it's way simpler than I thought um, so I think that is all we're going to do now we're going to put it back together completely and we'll run one more power test on it and see what happens Okay, so I put the wheel drive back together. Um, again, I've got the wheel, the, the drive mounted on the wheel, but I don't have the clutch engaged. Um, but this is kind of what we have now. Way, 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 way better. Uh, I don't really have a good way to engage the clutch and test it out here, so I'll have to take it back to the boat. But. I think we got her. Took a while, took a little trial and error, but I think we've got it. So if you're ever working on your wheel pilots making noise and you can't quite figure it out, uh, don't be afraid to open up that gearbox. Just be prepared, have, uh, have some clean paper towel or something to catch all the pieces. And that's it for this video. Next up, going to be our new uh, companionway doors that we're working on but we'll have that in another episode